Ernest Hemingway, also known as Papa, was the man of many things. He was an author, freethinker, adventurer, sportsman, and bon vivant. But one thing Papa was not was a spectator. He constantly traversed the globe from one port of call to another, collecting tales, each more epic than the last. Aptly named after Papa and the vessel of his endeavors, Pilar, Papa's Pilar Rum was crafted to harness this mindset and homage to Papa's adventurers and be an inspiration for yours. Papa's Pilar is our partner for this four episode series. So sit back, relax, and enjoy your favorite Papa's Rum expression. And to quote Papa, a life well lived is the only life worth living. Here's to never being a spectator. Welcome back to the Outdoor Adventure Series podcast, where we celebrate individuals and families, businesses, and organizations that seek out and promote the exploration, stewardship, conservation, access, and enjoyment of the outdoors. Papa's Pilar Run sponsors today's episode, and we're excited to have their national mixologist and sales manager for the state of Florida, Kyle Cooper, join us again on the Outdoor Adventure Series. You'll recall from our last episode with Kyle, he he is responsible for the Papa's Pilar brand. And today is actually extra special because we're going to learn a little bit more about his role as a national mixologist and why Papa's Pilar rum, while it is fantastic in the perfect rum glass, uh, neat or over some ice, is wonderful, but there are so many wonderful recipes that can be made uh, with Papa's Pilar Rum, and Kyle's going to introduce us to this whole profession of being a mixologist and the impact it's having on the brand. So, Kyle, welcome back. Thank you, sir. Glad to be back again. Fantastic. And as I was researching back uh, through the website and looking at the recipes, by the way, I did find my favorite recipe. I'm not going to share what it is. I'll Maybe a little bit later. Let's see if you talk about it. But I, I'm curious, as a national mixologist, for our listeners, what is a mixologist? So, you know, it's funny that that word gets thrown around a lot. And a lot of people say they're a mixologist. A lot of people say they're bartenders. For me, a, a mixologist is someone who really has kind of honed their craft can be a bartender behind the bar at any Joe Blow bar that's just making Tito's and soda or a Captain and Coke or things along those lines. To, to me, a true mixologist is someone who really is more like a chef, right? They are behind the bar. They're really curating each of these elements that go into the cocktail itself in different various you know proportions, right? You do X amount of lime juice or X amount of orgeat or X amount of simple syrup or bitters or this, that, and the other. And what you're doing is you're crafting a cocktail to truly express your vision of what you had to, to, to give to the guests as an engagement. And for me, it's creating cocktails that use the nuances of each of our expressions of our brand to really make our rum shine in a cocktail and not get lost. How does one become a mixologist? <laughs> I really, there are certain various certifications that you can go out and take online and things along those lines to, to do that or way or another. I think honestly, it gets down to more of your passion, passion for being behind the bar, passion for creating cocktails. And for me, uh, that's the passion of, of that consumer uh, engagement, uh, be able to make a cocktail for a guest using the brain that you have. And have them try it and, and you, you instantly get that satisfaction, right? This, the, the twinkle in the side of their eye, that smile that creeps up on the side of their mouth. Same thing for me, like I like to cook at the house. So when I'm creating these dinner engagements for friends and family that come over, having them take that first bite and then really go, oh man, this is awesome. Same thing with the cocktail. Take that first sip, even when they've already had it in front of, uh, front of them visually. Uh, having them take that first sip and go, oh wow, that's just something awesome. That it really is unique. And that that in itself is is literally what I what I strive for. Okay, fair enough. I, I am curious, and this is the perhaps the scholar practitioner in me as a coach is. I'm curious: is there a a book? Is there some mixologist who was? I mean, this was this was the person, the man, the woman who really uh, 
other mixologists, folks like yourself, who basically developed the skill and expertise along the way. Is there someone you looked up to? Is there a book that you read that was like, this is my go-to when I'm starting to explore and research other uh, craft opportunities? Man, there's so many out there. Um, from the rum category, you've got Don the Beachcomber, who was quite literally the inventor, basically, of Tiki. Mm -hmm. um, and then you've got other guys out there like Jerry Thomas. Uh, it was huge. He had his entire craft cocktail, not really craft cocktail book that was out. Um, he even has his own bitters lines named after him as well. I'd be remiss if I didn't mention Phil Green. He's been a phenomenal guy and a phenomenal partner with us as the brand. And just, man, he's just a, a fountain of knowledge. So I guess if I had to narrow it down to three people, it would be those three. But there's just, there's so many excellent, excellent originators of, of truly craft cocktails out there. Very good. Now, I'm curious, too, with the reputation of Ernest Hemingway and the Hemingway brand, how has that impacted how the expressions of your brand have show, appeared in your cocktails that you are uh, sharing with, with the uh, consumer or on your website for that? Well, as, as very you know, people well know, Hemingway was very famous for his Papa Doble. And that was his cocktail. If you ever caught him in Cuba... Uh, he was sitting at the corner at La Floridita. They actually even have a statue there of him still to this day. And that's where he would go and drink Papa Dobles all day. And for those that don't know what a Papa Doble is, it is an essentially a double daiquiri. So his, his famous daiquiri that he loved uh, had a little bit of grapefruit and lime, uh, rum, and then he typically would do it without sugar. Uh, but sometimes you can add sugar into it as well. But he would do double daiquiris all day long. And that was his famous cocktail. So we, as a brand and me, myself as well, had to perfect that Hemingway daiquiri. And it's using our blonde rum. It's truly an awesome, awesome cocktail. Every person that tries it just goes, man, I never would have thought in a million years that I could have a daiquiri taste like this. When you say daiquiri to a lot of people that go out and do it, they're, they're thinking, oh, that's that frozen concoction I get out of the machine. Right. So right. changing the mentality of people that know what actually a great cocktail can taste like versus something that's got to be full of sugar and give you a headache the next morning. Yeah, definitely that. Well, my commitment to you, Kyle, is I have, by the way, some of my pals uh, who are also uh, affiliated with Clay Abney, your PR guy, got bottles, even though I got the little one. That's okay. I'm going <laughs> to, one of my commitments to you, by the way, is I'm going to make the, uh, the Papa Doble for myself and for my roommate. So that's going to be, uh, and, and that's not the, the one drink, the one cocktail that, that I'm thinking I have to make that I, even I can do it. Okay. But I, I think it's wonderful, but my commitment to you is I am going to make a Papa Doble. So I, I'm looking forward Fantastic. to that. So how is the role of the national mixologist? How are you on a day-to-day -day basis enhancing the brand of, and of the various expressions? How are you doing that? So my wife loves this, by the way, it's truly making cocktails at the house on my spare time and over the weekend, going out to accounts uh, in the marketplace, obviously everything on social media and trying different expressions. As, as you all know, our brand's flavor profile is very unique. So not every cocktail that you find out there that's a rum-based cocktail is going to work with our blonde or our dark or sherry or rye finish. So it's a matter of finding a flavor profile that I really like something that stands out to me go, I never really thought to do that. I, man, that sounds really good. Take case in point, pineapple and chicory. That's, mm. that's two flavors I would have never in a million years thought would work together. But one of our rum runners up in Maryland, Aaron Joseph, uh, who's, who's an amazing, amazing bartender, tremendous guy, uh, introduced me to it. And I was like, well, wow, that's just a great flavor that works really well together. So it's a lot of experimentation, um, a lot of finding various liqueurs or recipes or juices or juicing stuff at the house and playing around with them. And so you get it right. Best example of that would be the Hemingway daiquiri that we have on our website, which we call the perfect Hemingway daiquiri. And that's literally the perfect balance of our rum with lime, grapefruit, maraschino liqueur, and then a little bit of simple. You, by the way, you're getting close. Cause I, I was looking at that one today. I was like, I, I could do that. And my, my roommate, <laughs> She's the one that loves her cocktails, and I, and I was showing her the the website, and she goes, "How? I think I can do this." And so I was like, "Okay, you're in charge of this. I'll provide the rum, but you're in charge of the of the, uh, the cocktail." 
So you have the 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 different expressions of the Ram. Let's talk about some of the the highlights of, of one of each uh, expression in some of the classic uh, cocktails that you're uh, you guys are dreaming up there. Sure. So the blonde, as you can imagine, uh, it is very versatile. The way that we kind of approach it is, yep, exactly. I, I got a little mini here too. All right. All right. So, thank you. <laughs> We're a good company now. Yep. We The way we look at it is it takes any mojito that you'll have on the menu, which is your essential lime, simple mint, and elevates that mojito to a different level because of the flavor profile that we have with the blonde, right? We're blending seven different age rums together in addition to our Key West distillate. So those, all those different rums create a very unique, uh, a lot of people say it's got a lot of melons, some butterscotch flavors to it and vanilla. And that just takes that mojito and gives it such a better mouthfeel and such a better uh, taste going down than essentially any sober or clear rum that you're going to have that you're really only tasting lime and mint, to be honest. Now, when it comes to our dark, our rye finished rum and our sherry cask, uh, there's a lot of different ways to play with it. I love to do variations on old fashions. Truth be told, I, I am a whiskey guy. Okay. Started off, it's like how I really kind of got into spirits more. And then using our dark, you can take it and just changing a little bit to it creates such an amazing different cocktail. Most people don't think to do a rum old fashion. So we use orgeat with a little bit of lemon. Uh, spritz and then just regular Angostura bitters. So if you're replacing simple with orgeat, which is an almond simple syrup, mm -hmm. and then instead of an orange peel, you're using a lemon twist. So that way the lemon brightens up the dark rum. With the rye finished rum, to this guy. That's the one, by the way, that that I I, I want to go get because I love rye. I, I might have mentioned this to you in our last episode. Rye brings back some childhood memories for me from when I used to go to weddings bar and bat mitzvahs and the old guys would be up at the bar ordering a drink and of course at the time young kids like me 13 year olds we could get cocktails hey would you know, like a whiskey they you always get a rye and i just yeah. there's just something about brings back great memories i digress so tell us about that <laughs> well i will say uh rum and rye man it, it's literally to me it's, it's like a match made in heaven i mean you've got the sweetness of the rum paired with the baking spices of the rye. And it's just, it's literally almost to me like a, a bottled old fashioned ready to go, but there's ways of making it a little better. When I was in Berlin last year, I was making banana bread old fashions mm. and quite literally it is our rye finished rum, Gafara banana de Brazil, uh, a little bit of Demerara simple syrup, which is, you know, raw sugar, simple syrup, has a little bit darker complexity to it. And then black walnut bitters and I had this guy that came from one of the local bars that was around here, and he probably bought four or five different people with him every single time we were there every day, coming back to get more of them. It was crazy. That's so, wonderful. but again, it's just it's just going to show that you can use these in, in an old fashioned. You can also use them in a Negroni, which is typically a gin based cocktail. Mm -hmm. I use our sherry cask. Sorry, it's open. I had a little experimentation this weekend with it. Nothing wrong with that. Uh, no. So, I mean, Negroni, equal parts sweet vermouth, Campari, or aperitif of your, of your choosing, um, and then gin. So we're sub substituting the gin with rum. And to me, it, it, it tastes phenomenal. It just depends on the kind of mood you're in, to be honest. How does the rum hold up to, like, I'm a coffee guy, I, I, which I haven't had yet this morning. <laughs> but how does rum hold up to... Uh, like a, 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 a rub in the coffee or a hot toddy type of drink. Uh, incredible, actually. So okay. as of you know this year and then last year, to be honest with you, the espresso martini has been on fire from a cocktail mm. standpoint. It is uh, what what was what was the terminology? Somebody explained it to me. It's the the gentleman's Red Bull and vodka. Okay. <laughs> so, you will never but, get me drinking a Red Bull. By the way, I just I I've seen what those plants look like that make that. You will never yeah. get me. No. <laughs> I can safely say I've drinking my fair share of Red Bull and, and do still partake in them every now and then, just depending all on right, if I need all right. a pick me up or not. But um, as far as espresso martini is concerned, I mean, you can use our blonde or our sherry cask. Uh, Inga, who's one of our rum runners out in California, created this cocktail called That Thing You Brew. Uh, and it's literally equal parts either espresso or cold brew with sherry cask. And then we use Amaro in there as well with some chocolate and Angostura bitters. And 
man, it is probably one of the best espresso martinis I think you've ever tried in your in like ever. And the fun thing that I like to do is if I'm ever at a bar or a restaurant and I'm sitting down talking to either you know, the bartender or the manager and someone at the bar orders an espresso martini. And what I'll do is that they've got the blonde in stock. I'll have them make the same espresso martini using our blonde instead of vodka. And literally it is a night and day difference when the consumer tastes it. They'll taste this espresso martini. They go, that's, that's good. I like that. And then they'll try it with our blonde. And they go, oh my God, this is incredible. Why have I never thought to use this before? And it's changing the mentality of consumers that you don't have to take a rum based cocktail and douse it in juice, mm -hmm. right? A lot of times you'll see a rum cocktail that's doused in pineapple and grenadine and OJ. And by the time you're done with it, all you've got is a boatload of fruit sugar and then a headache the next morning because you had four or five rum runners. Not that there's anything wrong with a rum runner, but nothing wrong. Same thing, you're going to wake up with a hangover the next morning because all the sugar you just didn't took. So by having a cocktail that's not loaded with sugar, that still is a phenomenal cocktail that people love and people are drinking out in the marketplace, uh, is, is the best way I go about it, trying to get in front of new consumers. Uh, I love it. And I think we, we chatted about this during our, our first episode. Papa's Pilar is not just going to be in a high-end steak and cigar restaurant here, like in Vegas. I mean, these high-end super chef restaurants, but you know, the idea is to get this brand and, and these uh, uh, expressions out into the neighborhood bars and really yep. up, help up the, the, the bartender's game, so to speak. Oh, absolutely. And talking about these cocktails, old fashions and, and, and uh, espresso martinis, there's also basic simple cocktails that you can do as well. I mean, two of the bigger sellers that we've got are the handshake and colada, which is basically a pina colada, just not using a blender, which mm -hmm. ask any bartender in the world and they will tell you that they hate using a blender more than anything, uh. probably ever. <laughs> so being able to craft a cocktail that all I have to do is literally shake it in a tin and pour it into a glass, they're going to love it. Another one is what we call a partly cloudy, and that's just okay. ginger beer and dark rum with a lime. Partly, so, so that's like the dark and stormy. Correct. Okay. So I have a, a a friend of a friend back in Canada. He and his girlfriend are now wife. They love their dark and stormy. So I will turn them on to that. Now, you mentioned the colada. By the way, I think you may very well have hit on the one I was looking at. Was this the Papa's colada <laughs> you were talking about? Yes. Well, we there's two different variations. We have one on the website, and then we have another one as well. It's They're very, very similar. But yeah. Okay. Well, you had me at coconut. When it comes to colada, you had me at coconut. I love, there's something about coconut, coconut and pineapple, coconut and chocolate. It's just, I, I, I would die and go to heaven, uh, hopefully. <laughs> but uh, so the recipes that are on the website, how are they getting there? Now, I mean, obviously with the, the techie is putting the, the recipe, the photo up there, but how are those recipes finding your way onto the Papa's Pilar website? And do you rotate them periodically, keep those refreshed as new recipes come in from your mixologist or your customers? Absolutely. And it's a combination of a lot of different places. Bill Green has had some influence on it. And then, like I said, we've got our rum runners out in the field as well. They, a lot of these people are also part-time bartenders. So they're creating these cocktails on their own. And then being the national mixologist for us, I'm in charge along with our marketing team of making sure all of these cocktails are refreshed and up to date and, and more than anything <clears throat> simplified for the at home bartender, because the last thing I want to do is put a cocktail on there that you're going to have to go buy a specific liqueur online or stay at home for three hours, making a, you know, simple syrup or reduction or, you know, anything along those lines. So. We're trying to make cocktails that you, the consumer at home, can easily find the products and ingredients for and make it and enjoy a great cocktail and, and think about something outside the box while also trying something new. Okay. There was a movie out many years ago. I think it was Bing Crosby was in it. it it's a movie you, you couldn't have on television anymore. You had to find it on cable because it's not exactly politically correct. Having said that, it's called <laughs> Holiday Season. Holidays, I would okay. imagine, are very important when it comes to Papa Papa's Pilar and the rum expressions because 
you're you're trying to tap into the holidays. So tell us more about how you do how you have done that in the past, and what would a a, a new listener? I mean, we're in the middle of the winter. We're, we're thinking of I'm thinking about warm weather right now. But <laughs> how does the seasonal aspects of drinking and enjoying the, these rum expressions, how does that play into your, your branding? Um, it 100% plays into it. I mean, you have to envision, yes, down here in Florida, we really don't get a lot of change in seasons. It is cold you know, yesterday and today. It actually got down to the 30s yesterday, which is incredible for Tampa. So I was loving it. I love cold weather. But when we're putting our cocktails out on our website and also via social media, you have to kind of placate into that because not everyone lives in Florida, right? You got people up in Michigan right now that are miserable or my wife's family that lives up in Maine that just, you know, got dumped in more snow on this past weekend. So they're looking for things that are going to be a little bit more warming, right? They're going to a little bit more seasonal as far as the flavors that you've got for that typical time of year. I mean, case in point, you've got like October, November time, which is very pumpkin heavy. Right. And then you've got Christmas time, which is a lot of spice and cranberry. Uh, and then springtime, which is a lot more floral and citrus notes. And then summertime is also, you want to try and make it very light because it's super, super hot outside. So using those different seasons into creating very different cocktails is, is honestly, it's a lot of fun. We did uh, one, it's called Apple of Mai Tai uh, this year at uh, the Daiquiri Deck. And it's basically an apple uh, Mai Tai. It's very simple using apple jack brandy and apple cider. Um, for New Year's, uh, we do a, a, an old Cuban, which is a very classic cocktail that not a lot of people are aware of. It's basically like a uh, mimosa and a um, mojito had a baby together, right? <laughs> so you've got dark rum with a little bit of lime and simple syrup and mint, and you top it with Prosecco. And... I was at a New Year's Eve party with my parents and my wife and a couple of friends and had a couple of those. They're just a fun, fun drink to have. And That's then, a you know, drink my, my, my roommate's going to like, because she loves her mojitos. Yeah. yeah. Okay. okay. Definitely have her try it. We've also got a coconut mojito on our website as well. Okay. So you being the coconut fan, it'd be right up your alley too. All right. That's very good. So I am curious. Let's say it's the middle of the summer. It's hot. It's humid been a long week you've worked your butt off your wife has been busy and she goes kyle let's just go up to the patio and enjoy a cocktail what are you both gonna have well unfortunately for me my wife is a vodka and red wine girl <laughs> <laughs> so for her it would probably be a go-to of either a glass of champagne during the day or a dirty martini but if it's at nighttime, it's probably a, gla a glass of cab. For me, uh, it's again, if it's the, it's the morning time, I'm probably going to do what's called a bitter blonde. And that's quite literally our blonde rum with some Sprite and just a little bit of Angostura bitters dashed on top. Very easy, very simple, but super light, refreshing. I could down 10 of them easily. If it's nighttime, I'm switching back to the Negroni. That's honestly, I, for me, it's my, one of my favorite, favorite cocktails, probably my top favorite cocktail. Either that or a paper plane, but I use our rye finished drum with that. What tell us more about that? So a paper plane uh, originally is bourbon, fresh lemon juice, aperol, and amaro. Okay. So equal parts of each, depending on how much you want to have. It could be anywhere between half an ounce to an ounce. Uh, usually about three quarters of an ounce. But so instead of bourbon, I use our rye finished drum in replace of that. Mm -hmm. And it's very crucial to use fresh lemon juice. A lot of times in, in our cocktail, I, I can't stress enough to using fresh lime and fresh lemon juice. Oh, yeah. Can literally make the cocktail or break a cocktail. I, I try to tell it to everybody, just go out and buy some limes, buy some lemons, go on Amazon, get one of those hand juicers. I think they're like seven bucks. Oh, yeah. It, trust me, you'll try it once and, and you'll never use concentrated lime juice ever again. The One of the best investments <laughs> I ever made. So yep. I, I have a question for you. I'm kind of curious. It was a little bit of a imagination. I, I'm well beyond my 21st birthday. When I grew up in Michigan, the drinking age was 18, and then they changed it to 21. So I literally could go out to drink when I was 18, but then like a year later, they changed it to 21. So, so I had two opportunities to go out and get my first a drink as an adult, so to speak. 
if let's say there's a parent wants to take their kid out, they just turn 21. They're going to take, I mean, I'm sure they've had drinks before sneaking behind while the parents are away. Oh yeah. But parents want to take their kid to the, the local bar and if for a parent going to the bar with the, with the kid, what do you want? to recommend as that first adult cocktail with one of your expressions what's that what's that first drink for the for the uh the new adult and it's it's funny i'm going to kind of contradict myself from earlier um but as someone who is not new or is new to alcohol and for them the best course of action i believe would be to kind of bury it a little bit as you as you can imagine in a cocktail so there's a cocktail that we have called the Reef Runner. It is very, very simple to make. It literally uses Tropicana pineapple mango juice in our blonde rum. Uh, for those people who are well initiated into alcohol, you can do a float or a dark on top. That is literally just, it's, it's pineapple and OJ with a little bit of passion fruit and lime juice. And for them, that is a great way to try a first cocktail of sorts without having a straight booze like you would have like a daiquiri or an old fashioned, it's hundred percent alcohol, right? Cause you want to kind of ease them into that before. So that way they're not like trying it once and go, this is horrible. Why do people drink this? <laughs> so, okay. Okay. Do you golf by the way? I try, I, I, try. I, yeah, I grab the stick, I hit a ball and 90% of the time it goes right up to the right, which I always hit mine open cause playing baseball, it was just, I've got a baseball swing for a golf swing and. I've tried taking lessons that my wife has bought me and I, I just, I, I've tried to get out and golf. I just don't get out as much as I probably could. I, I, I that sounds all too familiar to me. <laughs> so in golf, you have the proverbial ninth hole and you take that quick break. Maybe you have a beer, a quick lunch, but you have the 19th hole after you're done playing. So you're in the, you're in this beautiful setting on the golf course. It's the 19th hole. You're sitting out on the Piat patio comparing scorecards and talking about that one that one miss or that perfect putt what drink are these guys these women gonna have on the table with them instead of having the the red bull or the beer well if you're like me and you've been on the course you're very frustrated by the time you finished your 18 holes yeah <laughs> so typically for me it's probably going to be a rum on the rocks just okay. to kind of get that out of the way take a deep breath and relax for a minute. But after that, I, I would honestly, I'd transition to probably one of uh, Ron Call, who's our master distiller, his, his favorite cocktail is the Manhattan. Okay. And our sherry cask makes one hell of a Manhattan. Um, as you can imagine, the rum finished in a, a Spanish Ola Rosso sherry rum cask plays very well with sweet vermouth. And it's just one of those nice cocktails that you, you can sit, have one, put up a martini or on the rocks, if you like it on the rocks, and sit there and sip on it. And it's it's got enough flavor and depth and profile to it to where it's not just like you're drinking straight rum. Okay, very good. Well, I may not uh, go out to the golf course, but I, I most certainly uh, get it. It's it's it's, uh, it's definitely a, a plus having a roommate that likes her cocktail, so that, that that works out well. But that sounds very good, very good. One last question I'm curious about it. How do you recruit or what are you looking for uh, when it comes to having one of your rum runners or, or a new mixologist coming onto the team, what are you looking for? We look for people that are passionate about what they do. At the root of everything, this business is is really re based on relationships. The relationships that we have internally as a team and then the relationships that we have with our accounts in our respective areas. So we look for people that are outgoing um, as a brand. Our, mo our logo is never spectator. So the one punchline that we do have normally when we're, when I'm doing a dinner or an event, I always kind of finish with live courageously, but drink responsibly. Right. Right. So we, we look for people that are out and about, always engaged in their community, love seeing local restaurants, love going out to local restaurants and bars, um, and, and have a, like I said, a very passionate and engaging attitude. That's honestly, you, you, you don't have to be a salesman. And you don't have to be someone who's well-educated in this industry to be good at what you do as long as you're passionate about it. And that's, that's the biggest thing for me is, is that. Fantastic. On that note, I, I truly appreciate this episode. I'm like, I'm like very interested in some of the recipes you've shared. 
uh, especially the the Papa Doble, which I feel like now that I've well I've done four episodes with Papa's Pilar, that's the <laughs> one I need to have first. But you know the the mojito, the Papa's Colada, uh, the Manhattan, so, so, with a variety of the uh, of the expressions, I think definitely my alcohol intake is going to probably increase for at least the, the foreseeable future. I can't go too far into this, but uh, I really appreciate you really sharing about this world of mixology and how your expressions are really going into making these wonderful cocktails. And uh, thank you again for joining us. Oh, it's my pleasure. Thank you so much for having me. It's been great talking with you today and kind of engaging and talking with you through all the different cocktails and the ways that we try to put ourselves out in the, in front of consumers. Very good. Listen, now, before we do head out, if our listeners would like to learn more about Papa's Pilar and the various expressions, where's the best places for them to go? Our website, www.papaspilar.com. It's going to have our whole story on there. And then on the top left will be a link to all of the cocktails that you have for the different expressions. So you just click on a different expression and we have them sorted. You can do it by seasonal, by blonde, dark, rye, or sherry. And it's got I mean, we must have close to a hundred different cocktails on there. I love it. I love it. Well, let's see hundred cocktails, hundred days. I don't know if I can do that, but <laughs> I might make a dent to like, let's say, let's say I commit to five, I commit to five, but, there you uh, go. There you uh, go. but I, I love it. Listen again, uh, Kyle has been a pleasure to have you on the podcast and we're looking forward to, uh, one more episode with you guys. We're kind of going to hear more about the, the story of your con the conservation efforts, the community efforts with Michael Myatt, and just really very excited about that as well. And I think as you and I are recording this episode, your our second episode with you is actually going to be up uh, tomorrow. So this is uh, uh, I was very excited to have you back today, so I could say, hey, guess what? Your episode is going to be up tomorrow. But again, it's I'm been a pleasure to have you, to and I, I hope that you and I will cross paths. And I want to let you. I want to say. Kyle, make us a, make us something, okay? And surprise me. So I'm excited about sure, that. Sure, absolutely. Very good. Listen, stay in the line. We're going to do a final chat. Uh, uh, stay in the line. We're going to do a, a final close. You and I can have a final chat, okay? Sounds great. All right. Take care. All right, folks. I hope you enjoyed today's episode with Kyle Cooper, the national mixologist for Papa's Pilar Rum. Uh, this is our second episode with Kyle, and today was, I think, pretty special as Kyle kind of walked us through the many recipes that have been created to really take advantage of Papa's Pilar's rum expressions. I mean, this is a premium rum brand. This is not like your Captain and Coke or a Bacardi and fruit drink slushy. Kyle walked us through some pretty sophisticated but easy to create rum recipes. He went into some more detail about what it means to be a mixologist and how you get there. And really that you can enjoy Papa's Pilar, whether you spent a day on the water, you're coming off the golf course, or maybe it's a, a nice sunny day and you're up on the roof or by the pool, just enjoying an adult beverage. And certainly Papa's Pilar rum expressions can be a part of that enjoyment. So now I definitely want you to go out to their website at, at papaspilar.com. On the website, there is a page there where you can look at the many recipes that have been crafted by using these rum expressions. So lots to choose from, whether there's fruit or just straight with uh, minimal additions to the rum expression, or perhaps like me, who someone who likes uh, a lot of coconut or chocolate or coffee and, and rum. I mean, there's definitely lots of opportunities uh, for you as well. And you do want to check out Papa's social sites and we'll provide all the backlinks to them as well. As for us, you can find this episode on our website, OutdoorAdventureSeries.com. We are also on LinkedIn and Facebook, and you can find us on YouTube as well as the many podcast directories that are available. So wherever you listen to your podcast, chances are we are already there. Now, if you do enjoy uh, our episodes, we certainly like to have likes and comments and please share it, especially again, like today's episode, we hope you share it with your family and friends who you think 
might enjoy this conversation we had with Kyle. Okay, folks, wherever you are, whatever you're doing, go out there, have a phenomenal day. And we look forward to having you join us on a future episode of the Outdoor Adventure Series podcast. Papa's Pilar Rum, our partner for this Outdoor Adventure Series episode, is an ultra-premium rum brand whose expressions were inspired by one of the world's most incredible adventurers, Ernest Hemingway. Enjoy your next adventure. Live courageously, but drink responsibly. We look forward to having you enjoy another episode of the Outdoor Adventure Series podcast. Take care now.